Now then. I had a dream last night. And indeed the night before. I was going on a walk. It wasn't quite through a wood, but it was through a lot of undergrowth. A bit like a, an overgrown vineyard. I was sort of chopping my way through... And there was this cantankerous, wrinkled, grumpy old man with me as well. Yumpy with the all this was fields in my day. Well, he wasn't quite like that. Uh, um, and we were searching for truffles, but normally when you, you search for truffles, there's a pig. But no, 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 there wasn't a pig there. There, there was no pig. Uh, and then we went into a restaurant. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was all very nice. It was a bit French. This grumpy old man, every time I kept saying, look, there are truffles, there are going to be truffles. And he was going, no, 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 no truffles. And we kept fighting our way through the undergrowth. And we got to this restaurant, and then we were served this exquisite food, and it was down to the fact I'd found the truffles. But I didn't realise I'd found the truffles. It's all very weird. What does this dream mean, if anything, apart from the fact maybe I should eat less cheese at bedtime? Ian Wallace, good morning, dream psychologist. Hello. Morning, Annie. How are you? Are you scared? scared of me now. <laughs> no, and I just like to scotch the myth that eating cheese before going to bed gives you it's, nightmares. Oh, no, it doesn't, does yeah, it? it doesn't Not at all. At all. No, 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 no. Okay, um, am I going bonkers? Am I slightly weird? Or am I just confirming what everybody else knew here anyway, that I am rather mad? Yes, so I've just been in touch with your producers, Annie, and we have arranged <laughs> some transport to take you away in the next few minutes. So. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of it? So this is a, it's a really fabulous dream, Annie. So it's one of the things about dreams that you can think they're completely crazy mm. but you have to understand that a dream is a different type of language and also the dream's not happening to you Annie you're creating all this you're trying to tell yourself something yeah and because you're maybe not paying attention to that in waking life, that's why we keep having recurring dreams. Okay. So this is really lovely. So any time that you dream of walking through undergrowth or this vineyard or someplace that's quite overgrown, mm -hmm. it's kind of like going through a, almost like a childhood forest. So it's full of possibility and there's all that growth happening there that you've not been aware of. But also it's a bit confusing. You're not quite sure where you're going. It's a bit hard to struggle through there. So there's something in your waking life where um, something really valuable has been accumulating for you. And usually with any sort of plant, it's to do with experience and wisdom. Right. So you're fighting your way through this. Now, this cantankerous, grumpy old man, <laughs> any time you dream about someone else in a dream, you're actually dreaming about some aspect of your own character. Oh, dear, my grumpy and cantankerous. <laughs> So I told me then. <laughs> so there's some part of you, Annie, that is... Um, so it's an old man, so he'll be very wise, mm. he'll be very experienced, yes. he, he'll know a lot of stuff, yeah. uh, and he'll have a very good sense of how to do something. Mm. So that cantankerous nature that he has, it's something to do with the way that you criticise your own self sometimes. So maybe mm. you doubt yourself sometimes. Or, oh, I'm the hardest critic. Right, so you can be a bit <laughs> self-critical. But as you go through... Then this is the really lovely bit. So you're searching for truffles. So truffles are really, really valuable things. They're like nuggets. They're like gold nuggets. And you're trying to find them. And because they're buried in the earth, any time we dream about earth, we're dreaming about really practical things. So you are looking for these things of real practical value. And when we dream about food, we have so many, people have so many dreams about food. And we have a lot of idioms and phrases in our language to do with food, like having an appetite for success or a recipe for disaster and all these things. So if you're looking for food, you're looking for something that will be very fulfilling for you and other people. Mm. So you're trying to find something that will be very satisfying and fulfilling. Mm. And you keep telling yourself, this grumpy old man part, you're saying, this is rubbish, it's not very good at all, it's not very valuable. And you keep listening to that voice. But when you get to the restaurant, someplace where these truffles or these meals have a value, a real value, <laughs> yeah. then you're told what you're doing is absolutely exquisite. Ooh. So the message from your dream, Annie, is there's one part of you saying, uh, being very self-critical and really doubting what you do, but there's the other part that's intuitively sniffing all these opportunities out yourself and doing really, really valuable work. Oh, I love you, Ian. I'm not going mad then. <laughs> not at all, no. We, you see, it was interesting. We had a lot of response on the dream front, and, and I suppose it is that some people will just lay down and say, do you know what, it's a load of old codswallop. You can interpret it any which way you like. Um, but you obviously clearly believe that there is a subconscious working away there, and we shouldn't ignore our dreams. 
Well, it's not really a belief thing. It's just it's how it is. We have this thing that we do, everyone does every night, and it's a language that we create. And it's in there all the time. So people say to me, how do you know all these symbols, what's going on, who decides? And no one decides, and they just emerge as collective culturally in human beings. So that whole thing about using idioms and phrases, it's really important because we hear this all the time, that people saying, oh, he's got an appetite for success, or I was doing a a, a dream workshop in the middle of Australia once, and this guy asked me uh, if the coast was clear. And I think, well, you're 3,000 miles from the coast, why are you bothered? (laughs) So all these idioms and phrases are how our unconscious is expressed in waking life, and we just use them in our dreams as well, but we use them in the form of images and symbols. The food was very nice in the restaurant when I finally got there. Yes, well, that's showing that you can, actually. (laughs) Maybe I was hungry, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, well, you're maybe hungry for some other type of success. Oh, Oh, let's ask another can of worms for later. Ian, really good to speak with you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Have a good weekend. You too, Annie. Thanks very much for that brilliant dream. Thank you. Bye-bye.